What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we're going to be doing a 2024 mock draft which is a continuation of my most recent 2023 two round NFL mock draft. So go check out those videos if you guys have not already. The Tennessee Titans did make a trade that led them to having the pick that they do now. So you guys have to watch that in order to be able to understand why I'm doing things like this. Let's get right into the video. Of course, would love for you guys to join the community. All the links are down in the description below. Starting off with the number one overall pick, I actually did make this draft order. Don't be too pissy about the draft order. It's it's made up, you know. Of course, I'm going to get some things wrong, but there is a huge surprise toward the end, and you guys are already probably trying to click through the video seeing where that is going to be. But you know, for the people who are excited for a surprise, stay around because I do have some teams I'm throwing Hail Marys on as in terms of where they're going to be. In terms of in the Super Bowl, I have a team that is, I'm probably the only guy besides the super fans of that team that believe that they can make it based on the draft that they just had. So definitely stay tuned for that. Starting off with the number one overall pick, I have Joe Alt going to the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I think the Cardinals should be focusing on offensive line. Kyler Murray is going to be hurt the majority of the year, and he always gets hurt anyways. I'd personally sit him out for the year. You get to have your choice here. Marvin Harrison Jr. would be an excellent choice at this spot. But I also know that there's a lot of receivers out there. I also know that this draft that we're just about to have has a lot of receivers in it in terms of depth. So I think that the value of a number one receiver might not have the same impact as a star top five, top three tackle that I think Joe Alt could be in the NFL. Joe Alt's going to be a super special talent. I really do like him. And overall, I just think that his addition to this team is going to one, save a lot of money because tackles are expensive, but two, it's going to save a lot of injury risk that can happen to Kyler Murray, helps out the run game. I think this is the best impact that you can have. Pick number two, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers being here, and they are going to be going Caleb Williams. Not a big surprise. Caleb Williams is the first quarterback off the board. He is Houdini. You could see that Baker Mayfield takes a huge stride, and they end up saying, you know what, we want Marvin Harrison Jr. here. You guys will see until Marvin Harrison is picked that I will continue talking about Marvin Harrison Jr. because he is going to be my number one player in the draft, him or Joe Alt. I mean, this class is low to the top. More of the superstar talent than what we have in this coming draft too, which is awesome. I'm super excited for that. But Caleb Williams is going to be a superstar at the next level, especially if he has an offensive coordinator slash head coach that knows how to utilize his strengths properly. I'm very excited to see what he can do. Hopefully, Tampa gets it right because um, I don't want to see Caleb Williams being a bust because we all know that he can be tr something truly special. Next, we got the Rams. And... I'm going to go in quarterback here with Drake May. I just don't have faith in Stafford. He was already convinced that he was going to retire. He was contemplating it and then decided not to. Same thing with McVay. Aaron Donald potentially as well. They're going to try to do one more like rule of the roost, but I have no faith in it. You don't have Jalen Ramsey. You don't even have Bobby Wagner there. I just do not trust it at all. And Drake May is a young option that you guys can have for probably the next 15 years. He's really special. Someone who's definitely a clear top two QB in this class. Some people may even say number one, but that's probably going to be prospect fatigue. They'll probably be like, oh, I don't want to think about Caleb as the number one guy anymore. Drake May's special. He's an awesome player. Makes some mistakes here and there, but man, he's a really fun watch. And, you know, it made watching Josh Downs so like it made it so worth it because you get to see him at in work in his first season. And that's truly awesome to me. Next. We have Marvin Harrison Jr. going, this was part of the trade. I don't have faith that the Titans are going to be able to hit the ground running enough, but I do think Will Levis would be a very solid option for them in the long run. So they ended up trading up and being able to get their quarterback of the future, continue to invest in him. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't work because the rest of the teams in their division ended up getting QBs, ended up being better as well. So, you know, you lost the arms race. This could be wrong, but... Either way, you trade it up with the Lions. The Lions are here, and they're going to select Marvin Harrison. Now you're going to have Quentin Johnston, Marvin Harrison Jr. You're going to have Jameson Williams and Amon Ross St. Brown. Now you might say that's a little overkill. I say I don't give a damn. Straight up, you're getting best player available. I don't think that any of the other players are remotely worth it compared to the value that Marvin Harrison Jr. adds to your team, especially if you get to take him away from other teams that you might face later on. Marvin Harrison Jr. might be the best player at his position in the NFL when he comes in, which is pretty scary because he is truly spectacular. Next, we got Dallas Turner. 
he would have been a good option for the Lions as well if, uh, let's just say, I flopped uh, the teams and I had them a little bit later. Uh, Dallas Turner is great, great edge rusher. You're going to be pairing him up there uh, with Arnold Ebiketti, and I think that'd be a really cool addition. We got Adita, oh man, I can't even say his first name, but Adebaware from Northwestern in the second round in my mock draft for 2023. So now you're going to have Adebaware on the inside, Dallas Turner, Arnold Ebiketti. That's going to be a nasty front, and it's definitely worth building around. I just don't think a quarterback is necessarily worth it here. This is a good spot to potentially look at few free agents, quarterbacks, and potentially guys in the next round like Michael Penix. Unfortunately, he did not make it into this round because of injury concerns over his past history. But, you know, we'll talk about that when the time comes. Next, we have the Green Bay Packers. I do believe they will have a little bit of a fall off, uh, especially without Rashawn Gary. I don't trust a Lucas Van Ness to have an instant impact like that. And even though I believe I went a tight end for them in round number two, I still am going to be going after Brock Bowers here. You don't need to use Brock Bowers as a tight end. He's going to be a, well, as I listed, super weapon. So yeah, you guys, it's BPA. I know that at this point, you might as well just go a defensive tackle or something from Georgia, but I am going to do the right thing for you. That is going to be getting Brock Bowers. Next, I am going to have a man out of Florida State who should have come out this year. Jared Burris going to the Raiders, replacing Chandler Jones. It's just a nice way to be able to kick Chandler Jones out and have some new blood come in. Next, we have a, I was about to say Xavier Worthy. That's for a little bit later in the video. Quinn Ewers. I think if you guys are not having success, this is a great spot for Sean Payton to be able to mold his own quarterback. Uh, Ewers does have some issues for sure, but I have faith that he's able to overcome them. I do especially under the guidance of Sean Payton. He's been able to make guys like Taysom Hill work as well as Teddy Bridgewater. I would love to see him potentially mold a guy like Quinn Ewers. Next, we have A.D. Mitchell. So this is the pick originally to the Browns and now to the Texans. Uh, I think having him on the outside would be incredible. Having a true X receiver would just be awesome. I love A.D. Mitchell with all my heart. You guys ended off going with Bryce Young as well as Miles Murphy in that first round. So I believe you guys also got John Michael Schmitz. If not, I'm forgetting exactly who you got in the second round. It was not a wide receiver. I know it was an ex-build wide receiver. This was definitely a major hold that I still wanted to address. And A.D. Mitchell is a freak. I love him to death. He's going to probably be a top 10 player on my board as well. So uh, yeah, excited to see this really, really stacked receiving class come into the NFL and then be disappointed when half of them decide to return. Gotta love that. But next, we got Olu Fushanu. So now he's going to pair up with Paris Johnson. Braxton Jones could be moved anywhere. Yeah, he's going to go to the Bears. That's just BPA at this point. I think he's going to be a stellar, stellar player for the Bears. Now with an extra year of seasoning, I think he could totally lock himself as a top 10 pick. Next, we got Kool-Aid McKinstry. Uh, You're going to be basically replacing the Stephon Gilmore vacancy. And I just really do love what Kool-Aid could bring to the table. Obviously, he has that swag to him, but he's also a very talented corner that I think would fit the role of Stephon Gilmore extremely, extremely well. Next, we got Jeremiah Trotter. So this was based on the idea that Lamar was staying. But I have the feeling that if he does stay and there's not a long-term deal, again, we're going based off of what happened in the 2023 mock, then he would probably sit out at least part of the year. And if they do that, I assume they'll be around this range. Uh, So just be happy. Jeremiah Trotter is going to be an excellent addition to kind of replace that Patrick Queen role. That Patrick Queen never really rose to the full uh, occasion. I think Jeremiah Trotter is an elite defensive linebacker. And I think that he could add something truly special to a totally stacked defense. I mean, this team is overloaded. So I'm just going BPA based off of also a need. And they kind of only had one. I didn't think the quarterback value was good enough here. I'd rather continue seeing what mobile quarterbacks are out there and then working with them, keeping Tyler Huntley around. I'd personally do that. Next, we got JC Latham. So Bama, offensive tackle. Didn't go an offensive tackle for the Patriots in the last mock. So uh, yeah, I think it's definitely a position that they are looking for. And it's also a spot where Bill Belichick gets to go with his buddy Nick Saban's recruits. Next, we got Emeka Abuka. I did not, I believe, go a wide receiver or definitely did not go someone of talent level of Emeka Abuka for the Vikings. And I think they do need that continual firepower. 
and uh, he's truly awesome. I mean, this wide receiver class, I can't say it enough. I continue to stop talking about how awesome they are. It's so true. Like, I'm actually genuinely excited for this. And I almost stopped making videos for the 2023 mock draft or 2023 draft just because it is like so much worse than this coming class, especially in the first round. Like these guys are like spectacular. They are going to be elite wide receivers in the NFL. And we're debating whether guys like Quentin Johnston would even get a starting job at points. Like some people don't believe that I do, but there still is that massive differential in the class talent and you know being able to get someone like a mecca abuga who i think would probably go top 10 this year at 14 and that's with me pushing him up the board he's like what wide receiver three or four taken in this it should just tell you something about how how great this receiving class is going to be if these guys decide to come out next we got zach zinter did not go offensive line for washington went after defensive back and i believe linebacker but Regardless of what I did, I think that Zach Zenter would be an upgrade. High-powered offensive guard. He's somebody, I mean, I don't even know what the hell those elbow braces are, but, you know, he's someone who can literally level somebody while standing still. Has a lot of refinement to have, but I think I'm going to bet that he ends up doing that over the year. Next, we got Braylon Trice going to the San Francisco 49ers. Excited to see that San Francisco finally has a first-round pick. But with Brock Purdy out for, you know, at least six months, at least six months, like that's tough. That's tough. I don't think he's going to be back. And I don't believe in Trey Lance. That's just me. I don't believe in him. I was low on him the whole time. Anyway, I thought it was a pretty mediocre to bad pick for the Niners. I just was not a huge fan of Trey Lance. So I'm going to continue not believing in Trey and believing in Brock, but Brock's not going to be there. And I just don't, I just don't have the faith they're going to be able to pull it out. But they're still going to be 16th overall. They're almost making the playoffs with a guy who I have absolutely no faith in. So, again, it is what it is. But Braylon Trice is going to be a stud. Probably would fall to him anyways if they were in the playoffs just because not that many teams are that desperate for an edge rusher because this year's class is loaded with them. But, uh, yeah, incredible, incredible talent. I think he might have led the uh, nation in pressures, but... Really good player. Next, you got JT Tumalau going to the Dolphins. Another team that I didn't really see too many holes. I could have went actually after a right tackle here. That's totally valid. But I think JT deserves a bit of respect. And I wanted to put that respect on his name. Next, we have Amarius Mims. Speaking of a right tackle, I don't think this team needs too much more. So I'm going to go after best player available. Titus Howard also going to be up for a contract at that time. We'll see what happens with that, but Amarius Mims is a young developmental offensive tackle that could definitely step in and potentially take a big role next to Laramie Tunsil. Next, we got Xavier Worthy, a very fun option. You know, you might lack the size necessary in that Saints receiving room, but this is going to be your, without character concerns, Henry Ruggs for Derek Carr, and I think that'd be really cool to see. We started seeing Henry Ruggs before the incident start actually blossoming into a legit threat in the NFL. And I think Xavier Worthy could take a quicker step to that. Could be related to, or it could be like comped to Devontae Smith as well. But I feel like that role is pretty well fulfilled by Chris Olave. I think that's deep threat ability. Uh, Xavier Worthy's is going to be ground breaking. So I love it. I love it. 20, we have the Jaguars going after a slot safety in Dante Trader Jr., I love him to death. He was the reason I was lower on Deontay Banks because I thought Dante Trader was that special. And, you know, he's the guy who's popping off. I think that he could definitely end up raising up a little bit higher, but it's tough for somebody in that slot to safety role in the NFL being valued at higher than pick 20. But the Jaguars could certainly use a dog like him, and I would love to see that. I would just... Mm. Maryland defensive backs is just something that I am a huge fan of. I think they might be the most underrated DBU. Next, we have Jerzon Newton. That's one of my favorite players from this year's class that decided to return. Uh, yeah, he's a stud interior defensive lineman. He was my interior defensive lineman too before he decided to go back. Uh, just somebody with incredible speed. He plays, I mean, imagine Carl Brooks if you already have watched him, but better. 
And that's pretty much Jerzon Newton. Incredible speed for a man who's over 300 pounds. Great hand fighting ability. So he's able to get off blocks very, very well. And just somebody who is always having his nose on the football. Like he's always around the football. And I love it. I love to death. I think the Bears could certainly use him there. I believe they also got Mozzie Smith. So you can use that as a monster meaty front pause. So I really do enjoy that for the Bears. And I would just love to see Jerzon be able to continue kicking ass over in the North. Next, we have Eric Gilbert. So Kellen Moore, going to be a huge tight end guy. We ended off going Brian Branch and Tank Dell in our last mock draft. So that tight end role is still wide open. And man, am I still excited for what Eric Gilbert could be. He could be a special talent. So if he ends up panning out, that's going to be really awesome. I'm excited to see him have a Trey Palmer level resurgence and uh, potentially even better. Next, we got James Williams. Yes, I have. These are teams are in the playoffs. So James Williams ends up going to the Seahawks. They value their safeties, but also he can play linebacker. To me, he's one of the top players in the class if he gets his head back into the game. He had a little bit of regression in the last year. Granted, there was a lot of moving parts there that changed. But I really did think as a true freshman, he was going to be a top five pick. I loved him to death. Still do. And he's like, what, 6'5", 230. And he's going to be, he has so much potential. Just just wait out on him. I think that he could end up being much higher than this. He's a guy who I feel bad for putting at this spot. But um, certainly, you know, he can definitely move to a mul- multitude of positions. His talent is unquestioned. Next, we got Kalen Bullock. So... He's going to be going in there, pairing up a Minka Fitzpatrick to make a nasty safety duo. Uh, He's one of the best safeties from college last year, one of the most underrated players, and one of the few bright spots there for SC. Next, we got Cedric Van Pran. We did not end up going after interior offensive line for the Giants in the last draft, so I still have that hole pretty wide open, and I think that adding a nice young option there with SVPG, because it's Cedric Van Pan Grager or something like that, uh, would be a great addition. You know, he's definitely going to be a polished, very experienced offensive lineman. And at this point, if you're at 25, I think it's a good way to continue pushing towards a Super Bowl run. Next, we have the Jets. Yes, they had got Aaron Rodgers. So that was part of the mock. Uh, going after Tommy Eichenberg. I had him as my linebacker one before the year started, uh, or actually before this draft, and I think he's going to be an incredible talent, one of the most unsung heroes for the Ohio State defense, and a big, big, big uh, guy of the Discord. We all loved him there, and he's going to be truly special if he ends up going to the right spot, and I hope to God that Robert Sala knows how to use this guy properly. I believe he would. Next, we got Kingley Suamatia. Uh, You know, I'm going to try to pronounce this right. Suamatia. So he was the Oregon right tackle. He was a five-star recruit, transferred to BYU last year, and uh, he's going to be coming out. He technically has eligibility until 2026, but I think he could come out next year if he has enough hype. The Dallas Cowboys might not have Terrence Steele at this point, so it would be an excellent addition to bring on a young, high upside talent that has gone to two schools that they know how to train their offensive linemen. So very excited to see if this guy could take a big step up, a new addition to the 2024 mocks. Next, we got Bucky Irving going to the Bengals. Uh, there's a lot of Joe Mixon questioners out there, and I also think that Bucky Irving is just a better prospect. I think he's on that Bijan level in my eyes. I do think he's really awesome, but maybe he doesn't possess the frame and just the big playability that Bijan does. I think Bucky Irving's still a stud, though. Deserves to be a first-round pick. There's a lot of other running backs that deserve to be listed in here, but This class is that good to where you don't really need to force a lower value position. And then at number 29, replacing Chauncey's role or another safety role, Andrew Makuba. I would love this. Obviously, you guys are probably having PTSD from Kayvon Wallace, but I think this guy's way better than Kayvon was. So I think you guys could be a little bit happier and a little bit more comfortable with this guy commanding your defense. He's a ball hawk. I love him to death. He's a really fun player to watch. One of those dudes who does pop off on tape. So I'm excited to get a little bit more into it and see the down to down consistency. Next, we have the Bills. Yes, they just missed the Super Bowl. And Christian Haynes is a guy who I thought might have had a meteoric rise if he ended up going to the Senior Bowl and ended up testing at the Combine because to me, he's the most athletic lineman I have ever seen. I would be so excited to see him on the Bills and be able to use him 
running out in front of Josh Allen on maybe a quarterback power. I would love to see that because this dude is freakishly athletic and, you know, it's totally worth investing on that offensive line. And then, yes, I'm ready to get shit for this one, but I'm having the Detroit Lions going to the Super Bowl. I think that they have enough talent. I think Jared Goff has been to the Super Bowl when carried by his team. They have the running back necessary or the running back system necessary with David Montgomery. I think that's fine. I think they have a great offensive line. They have Quentin Johnson, so they have a complete receiving core. And then on the defensive side, they have a great defensive front. They have they also got Keanu Benton in there, so they have that defensive interior addressed as well. Uh, we got them a linebacker as well. We got Joey Porter Jr., not to mention the other defensive back additions. This team is built for a Super Bowl run. And again, Jared Goff has been to the Super Bowl. He's going to lose again. But this is a great time to take another Michigan guy in J.J. McCarthy that has some questions for sure. But you get that fifth-year contract, and you get to continue developing him. And you already got your superstar in Marvin Harrison Jr. to add to that receiving core to add just a little bit more oomph for J.J. to go in. Even though J.J., I think, has beat them the times that he has started against them. But that's okay. He's going to add Marvin Harrison the best piece of the teams that he has beaten. So, finally... Ending off the draft, uh, I actually do have the Chiefs winning again, going back to back. And they're going to go after Tyler Davis, one of those awesome punchy interior defensive linemen that I loved to send to them in the 2023 mocks. Another guy that decided to return that broke my heart. So that is going to be the video. Please show your love and support. It took me eight hours to build these slides over again. And it's a pain in the ass. You have to go and you have to find every single player and then it's a lot of grunt work and it's, it's a lot. So I do appreciate you guys showing the love for that because I want to give you guys some great content. So thank you again. See you guys on the far side. Peace.